Hey guys, welcome to another Asset Rain B25 video. For full disclosure purposes, these were sent to me as review copies and I did not purchase them myself with my own money. Without further ado, let's get right on to the review. As always, each box is wrapped in a thin layer of expanded polystyrene sheets inside these boxes, specifically designed to ship them. That's great and all, but I think the expanded polystyrene sheet as an extra protection is a bit unnecessary. Today we're looking at two boxes from the Asset Wearing B25 series. We got Bucks Team Trooper. This is another little army building pack. We've previously seen a box of green army packs of three figures and a bunch of weapons inside it. And our big box here is the K6 Jungle Chapo Het 6000K, which is a tank machine and is also able to connect with the previous builds and previous mechs. Our army building pack here has a nice box art display with the figures in different poses, action poses, top of the box showing them in different poses, really telling you that hey you can do a lot with these figures. There's a bit of a backstory here as well as some artwork, the concept art for the soldiers. So let's read this. A special task force created by the Argus government in 1997, the Buck team was the central commanding unit of all forces in Arkets. Rumored to even have actual seats within the Senate, their legends and accomplishments are seldom mentioned today as all information related to the Bucks team has been classified after being decommissioned in 2012. So, uh, and this guy even has a name, he's got Jack. These characters were also recently released in the regular Asset Rain line with the bigger scale figures. And the back of the box showcases exactly what you get inside the box, which is very useful. Here's where we've got the other box. And the other side, we've got more information here. The Chapel Het 6000K is Argus' standard issue armed heavy transportation vehicle. They are used by a wide array of ground forces such as K6 Jungle Team, 15 Stealth Team, and the 88th Sand Team, etc. On the back of the box also shows you everything you can get inside this set, as well as different transformations. And as always with these bigger sets, the instructions are also not included and there's a QR code there that you can scan via your phone to access the instructions. And you might be saying, hey, that sucks because if I don't have the internet readily available, the transformations aren't that hard, it's quite a simple toy to play around with. And not having instructions there is just greener for the planet, it's just less paper printed, so that's good. The pocket chain for the soldier unit is still waste a lot of space, which I'm not a fan of, so yeah, maybe make smaller boxes next time. Previous army pack, the three units are positioned on the left and on the right hand side you have all the accessories that were in a little baggy that I've already opened up. Tank unit, however, does use up a lot of its spaces. And as you can see, there's a lot of cardboard here to keep the box intact. Actually, two layers of cardboard for some reason. If you look at it in the front, we have the figure, some accessories there for the vehicle itself, and there's this big white box here. What's inside there? Well, all the tracks and the extra weapons and stuff are all inside that white box. Opening up, we got our extra sort of weapons and bits and pieces for the figure and the tank. And we got a whole bag of shield door pieces. And there is some instructions here, the assembly, the basic instructions that you, I guess you must have. So yes, yeah, so there's some basic model kitting here going on, which uh, it seems quite easy enough. Now the instructions here for the assembly is color coded, which would seem great at first, except it's not color coded in the way you expect it to be. You can see that orange doesn't mean it's in the front all the time, and bluish green doesn't mean it's in the back all the time. In fact, uh, it says these two together are the blue or the green thing, which is just very awkward. I wish that it was just all the front facing pieces were one color and all the back facing pieces were one color. That would make it much easier to follow. Doing this was pretty straightforward, pretty standard. I did not use any tools, any clippers or files or scissors or whatever. All of these pieces were pulled out by hand. As you can see, the edges are quite smooth. And uh, while there were a few bits left on there, I could, all I did was easily use my fingernail and just rubbed against it and all the extra plastic was rubbed off. So the building experience was okay. A little bit tedious because just doing door after door after door, but uh, you know, once it's done, see it's quite secure. So, there you go. So on the tank side of things, we have the tank itself, those doors of course, we have our pilot units there, the commander. We got these two connecting pieces that I reviewed in previous sets where they allow these picks to be converted into arm um, attachments or leg attachments. We got four different clips here, two two by twos and two one by ones that can clip onto the side of the body and 
most likely have your guns attached to the side of the body, just hanging there as accessories. We have this radio here, which is very classic, like old fashioned military antenna radio. And we have some rifles here assault rifle, like a is it M50 or something, sniper rifle, and a giant rocket launcher with a uh, scope. And the rocket itself is not detachable from the US of the body. And we have a turret gun here that plugs on top of the tank itself. We also have an oil pack which can be uh, plugged into the back of the figure as a backpack with an extra handle there for an extra accessory weapon or whatever. We also have this giant sword which reminds me of Final Fantasy 7 and there's a peg on the back. It can be pegged onto the side of the body of the machine or I'm assuming this this weapon as well as this giant gun with a giant clip that is removable is for the previous mech strongholds to hold on to. On the other side of the Bucks Team Trooper, uh, we have the three units there. We got Jack himself, of course, with this uh, really wavy hair. He reminds me of On Stranger's Tie, where you had the ghost ship people with their hair flying in the air constantly. And we got two generic soldiers there. They're similar to previous units in the sets, but the armor pack is slightly different from the previous ones. They got different designs, different molds, and different paint job. The overall color scheme is pretty nice. We got the two special pistols here for Jack himself, but his belt ones are sort of permanently attached to his belt, so you have to remove the whole belt if uh, you want to make it more screen accurate when he's holding the guns and stuff on his belt. Got a minigun here with the uh, machine bit that actually spins, much like the previous versions in the other backs. A uh, giant dagger sword blade thing, two sculpt assault rifles, two regular pistols that we've seen, also seen all these before. Uh, another radio here with this set and a radio backpack antenna. Now the antenna, there's a spare piece there, which is good. And uh, just like the other backpack, there's a handlebar on the side for carrying more accessories. Let's take a look, closer look at Jack here since he's a pretty new figure out of the entire line at this scale at least. And he's got a lot of new sculpts and molds. Just like all the other previous figures, the head itself is made out of soft rubbery plastic, which is quite solid and secure because of how you know, bulky it is in terms of the shape. It's just good look at the back of the hair, it just really flares up there. I like this style a lot. There's also an extra hoodie piece here, and yes, it is a separate piece on its own, so you can pop the head off and remove the hoodie if you so choose to do so. The armor body here reminds me of kind of like a bug-like shape. It's pretty cool. Uh, maybe it reminds me of the wasp or uh, Ant-Man or something like that or one of the common Riders. And uh, this is an entire body piece, it goes all the way down to these gun straps, it's all a single piece. And he's also got like two other gun packs on the side of his body as well. And this back piece you can see is just a back strap that goes down to the rest of these pouches. So all of these is a sink. So this is just a big single rubbery piece. Okay, so moving down to the legs, you can still move them up just like you normally would, and the soft plastic is so soft that they, they completely get out of the way. Yeah, when you're holding these, these feel like gummies. They feel quite secure. And the armor doesn't have any problem with um, moving all over the place. It's pretty good. So I like the paint job, I like the design, and uh, I like how accessible this, even at such a small scale. For those of you who don't remember, articulation is ball joints on the head, and this guy can move quite a lot. And we have a peg and swivel joint for the upper arm and we got a upper swivel so it's, you know it's just dual peg uh, single elbow joint and we got a fist and on little pegs it is a stomach joint where it moves forward and it does push us on the armor just a little bit but uh, it's okay i suppose and it's got the torso rotation here upper legs are on the ball joint but upper leg swivel single knee joint and the feet and as arms of both pegs as well. And got little pegs on the for pegging them onto the machinery or vehicles if you need to. Moving on to our chapel unit here, as you can see I've chain linked it to the stronghold unit as a little hook on the back right there. And due to the shape it's uh, presented in and the way the wheels are positioned, it really does make it seem like some sort of caravan slash train units so that's pretty awesome i suppose you know the more you have the more you're going to chain length them the previous set you got the green one here which is definitely uh, matches each other aesthetically using the same types of colored plastic so that's pretty nice we also have the same number six logo which reminds me of a hot air balloon with a, like a ball on top and a little square underneath i mean it is meant to be a skull but it really does look like a hot air balloon but let's just put this guy aside for now. 
So I did open up the K6 Jungle Soldier unit that I also got previously as a review copy and I put two of the unit guys in there. You see this guy there on the turret and I you know, rotate him along he's like yay I'm shooting stuff and I'm holding on to the gun. And since the gun is just pegged in it can have its own like slight rotation so if you want to do that. And Thor's just resting on his back. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's actually quite a lot of transformation stuff in this vehicle, so without further ado, let's, let's do that. First we go back there and we open this, pull this down, and we've got an extra area for people to stand on, I suppose. And you've got these door pieces, which you have to build, which are pegged in quite securely. So, what you do with these is, you just pull them out, and because they extend a little bit, they can be even longer, which um, is kind of cool. If I just do that, you can see, oh, that's pretty long. I suppose you could just take the this side there and unplug it, and plug it to this side to make it even longer. So, I guess the idea is that this is some sort of shield wall, because the rest of the vehicle does open up into a miniature operating station or base. Now, the door pieces here are not firmly on the ground. You see, it's actually uh, hovering a bit above, but you can see this metal joint there can actually move down. In fact, its default position was lower than this. It's quite stiff, but I guess that's useful. You don't want it to go up and down. So stiff is good. You need to just you know, wriggle it, wiggle it down. And now the door panel, the wall there is actually touching the floor now. All right, so first thing you want to do is lift this leg up. Use this handlebar to pull the entire door down. Uh, this leg will stop at his precise position. That's good. And this panel here can come down. It comes all the way down and stays on the floor. You got another wall slash barrier slash shield to pull up there. And now this door comes down. You have a little base area, some shooting area there, good cover. After you do the same with the other side, you have a pretty nice secured outpost. After you've done that with both sides, you have a pretty secure outpost. You've got you know, barriers here to protect your units. Uh, standing space there and your gun turret locations. These pieces can also come back up there to give your, you know, your soldier or unit more safety area. So that's an alternative that you can do, just so the guys are protected. The front panel here can also pop off. I don't think it's meant to, but it's just for ease of access. Like it's not a part of the world that this front panel comes off, but it lets you sit two guys in there. So you got the guy actually on the control panels there, the control gear sticks, uh, the driver controlling the machine. And you got an extra seat there, which is cool. You actually have a second seat for a passenger. And you see these seats are fully textured and stuff and modeled. Uh, you got some spaces there, which is also modeled, which is pretty cool. Got some engine details on the back there. And you got plenty of metal grid platings for the floor design. Those look really good as well. And plenty of little pegs to peg the feet in so the people don't fall over. There's a handlebar on the back here, so you can put a radio there if you want to, that's what I put there. Uh, I guess you can put a pistol there as well, Anything, any small items because the handlebar is a little bit close to the floor, so you can't put a rifle or rocket launcher there if you want to do that. So you can just close that back up. And there are little slits there, so you actually see inside the uh, cockpit if you want to do that. Another thing to notice, there are certain pieces on the walls that actually can be removed. Now if you look here, you can see there's certain pegs, one, two, and three, and four, there's one hidden underneath this hinge. And these pegs are the standard pegs that you can use to peg other machinery and vehicles. Uh, and the attachments, if you want to do that, just like the previous vehicles, these are just regular attachments. Those clips that I showed earlier for carrying more weapons and rifles, uh, use these pegs. So you can peg one in there and carry more guns if you want to. Or you can swap these pieces around if you want to do that. If you look from the inside, you see that these are peg holes that you remove this uh, pouch, this panel. Same on the other side, you can remove this so gas tank if you want to. Just one peg here. Move things around, swap them around. A lot of customization possibilities there. Treadmills and wheels underneath, much like the previous Stronghold units, are detachable units. You can see that there's another peg actually hidden there. Not really sure what that one is for, but I guess I could just plug that in there if I want to. Anyway, let's move these wheels out, which are also pegged in place, so they're a bit more secure, not moving all over the place. And now you have something that's more for levitating machinery for more strategic positioning, and you can make it go even higher by removing these wheels from the skeleton structure and then plugging them back in like so. 
it's just pretty much given us a lot of different pegs and different positions there. And you see that these uh, legs actually move out a bit because there's articulation right there. So now you have something that's even higher up. Uh, this kind of reminds me of like snow vehicles, like if, the snow, if there's a snowstorm, sandstorm, and the snow and, or sand is building up, they move the vehicle up so that the people can still you know, escape if they need to and have air to breathe. But uh, hey, this one's holding up pretty secure as well. Oh, there it goes. You know, just needs to balance it a bit, but you can do that. And of course, we do have more pegs on the back. So you can definitely get your stronghold unit wheels and plug them in there to do some sort of four leg monstrosity with more legs. And of course with all these peg holes and stuff, you can attach some stronghold arms on this machine and make it even more crazy because uh, it's one of those built toy gimmick things that you can get. The more toys you get, the more combination possibilities you can do. I think that's getting a bit too silly. Come on, it's a toy. Have some fun with it. You don't have to do it. I think it's kind of cool. On its own, I think the K6 Jungle Chapel Head to Unit makes a nice little playset. You got a figurine there, you got a portable base. There's a bit of modeling going on, but it's easy enough. And yeah, there's quite a lot of play feature here. A lot of swappable areas and customization possibilities. It's a nice little thing to play around with, even if you don't have any of the other asset range stuff. This is the first one you pick up. This is quite a nice one to have. If you prefer a more vehicle based machine than one of the other mechs that's already out, such as the Strongholds. The plastic quality here is just as good as the previous sets, so if you have any of them you know what to expect here. If you don't, the plastic itself is pretty solid. I didn't really notice any plastic runoffs from where the molding injection occurred. And the whole thing just feels solid, like you probably drop it a little bit and it shouldn't break. A lot of joints of the vehicles are indeed metal, and little metal bars, so they didn't cheap out on just using plastic joints. The paint colouring is pretty nice. I like this contrast of green, it's not always brown, dark and grey and quote unquote gritty all the time. Although there is a grey and black version coming out soon of this exact same vehicle, so if you want to get that instead, hey, you've got the option. The figure that comes with it is just a standard figure we've got in previous sets, but done in a slightly different colour scheme, and it looks pretty good and matches the aesthetic of the vehicle. The decals on the vehicle are also quite sharp and detailed, I'm glad they don't use any stickers. Of course, compared to the regular asset range, the larger scale stuff, these don't look like they have a hand painted feel, they don't have something that's more rough and more realistic, like what you would see with model kits, but those sets are also really expensive, so it's for something that's smaller, and cheaper and more toy friendly and more play friendly because you don't all have all that paint stuff to worry about scratching. This is a pretty good option for those of us who have less space, less budget, and maybe we like to just play around with these toys a lot more than just displaying them. And if you do have previous sets, there's just so much more possibilities that you can mess around with by combining this set with previous machines. I think a bit more dark and gritty look you have these guys. That's what makes this line interesting. You've got stuff like this, but you also have the really colorful stuff. So you can really mix and match and do different teams and different units, different fractions. And certain vehicles and certain minifigure units will have these different color options. And the upcoming Grayscale Chapel unit that I mentioned previously definitely matches the color scheme of these guys. So if that's what you're looking for and that you want these guys to have a vehicle, you have that option. And that vehicle also has a more robotic pilot unit, but the rest of the machine itself is the same as the green chapel unit. And I think these guys are pretty cool compared to the previous army unit where we had more sort of generic soldiers. We actually have a character here. Now in my previous videos, I did mention, yeah, it would be nice if some of the actual characters from the regular series will also start appearing in this smaller line. And it's pretty cool there that we got our first one here. So I'm not saying they listen to me, but if I have uh, an opinion like that, I'm sure a lot of other fans also want actual characters in this line, and I think they are listening to fans. The figures themselves look great, molding wise, they're great, paint job, they're pretty good. Not too much details on the back, but that seems to be part of the style with this more sort of stealth unit. You don't want too many cards on them or else they wouldn't be stealth. The clutch on the giants overall are pretty good, the paint job is pretty consistent and detailed, and the molding details are nice too. And while some of the weapon accessories are repeats from previous sets, we do have new weapons here, and we have new backpacks here, which are pretty cool. So in conclusion, I think these are great toys. I'm glad they're doing well, not just because they're giving me free toys, but I actually think they genuinely seem like nice people and a nice company that are actually passionate about the products they make. So overall, if you already have other B25 stuff, the unit here is a definite plus 
to add to your collection that you already have and this machine here is pretty fun on its own and also adds to the previous strongholds if you have them it's kind of like lego in a way that the more lego you have the more you can build and the more fun you can have and for everyone else who have not started their collection b25 uh, what would I recommend to start off with? Well, if you like the mechs and stuff, one green stronghold unit plus one of the soldier packs where you get three figures inside it, the green soldier pack, I think is a pretty good starting point. But if you don't like mechs too much and you put this sort of machine like a tank, I recommend picking this one up as well as one of those, you know, K6 sort of jungle soldier units with his three soldiers. So you have a nice little display going on. And if the green color scheme is not your thing, most of the units in the B25 line are sort of the sand color. And if you get these 88 sand deluxe set that I reviewed previously, you have a nice starter pack there, as well as a more recent low, sand lower set that can combine into it to start army building. As always, if you found this video useful and enjoyed it, please consider clicking the like button, subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And of course, leave a comment below on the ones that you have, which ones you like, or which one you, or what units you'd hope to see get translated from the bigger scale regular acid rain stuff into this smaller scale B25 line. As always, you can support this channel by turning ad block off or heading over to Patreon and supporting me there. If you have some products you want to send over for me to review, I'm going to be honest with my audience. We can send them here and I review your product if you like. As always, take care, have a nice day. I will see you guys soon. Bye bye now. Thank you.